What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing well. Uh, excited to be back here for another fight. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh, great to be back in the Midwest. I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm from the area because a lot of Chicagoans get mad at you, but I'm from a little bit up north and uh, the, the state to the north in Wisconsin is from the state line. It's nice being back and nice getting back into the cage. How long of a drive is it? Oh, from, from here to my hometown, it's about an hour and a half but it kind of depends on what the Chicago traffic is like, which is wildly variable. <laughs> Do you like fighting that close to home? Like on Friday, will there be a bunch of people from back home here and um, friends come out or, you know, I, after, after a couple fights of people saying, you know, how, how can I get tickets? Alex, where I, I try to distance myself a little bit from everyone uh, doing that, but I'm, I'm hoping that some people make it down. And um, if they're not, not down making it live, that they're at least, uh, in enjoying their their time after work and and maybe taking a little bit of violence after after yeah absolutely uh you got a pretty big matchup here carl moore um talk to me about him a little bit kind of what you expect out of him and what your fans expect to see out of you too um if, if you guys have seen my interviews before you know that i'm not really the kind of guy to do a lot of research um i know carl moore uh is is well decorated um Bellator athlete, but outside of that, I don't really know a whole lot. I'm I'm here to fight my fight, um, and like a lot of times, my fight it's gonna be ugly and kind of wild and pretty violent. So, uh, just uh, hang on to the edge of your seat because it's it's gonna be a fun one. You guys were originally supposed to fight in April, right? Absolutely. Um, what what happened there? I don't think we ever got like a reason. Was somebody get hurt or? Um, yeah, I, I think that my manager had told me that, uh, his, his camp for some reason wanted to, to push it out a little bit, um, as far, I mean, you know, stuff happens camp, w whether he got hurt then, whether he was hurt before and just wanted to take a little bit of time. It just gave me a little bit extra time at my, my new gym extreme coacher to, to keep working on stuff. But I will say that I'm, I'm a little disappointed not to fight in Honolulu, but could have been worse. We could have been Chicago in December. So, yeah, no doubt. Um, you just mentioned Extreme Couture, uh, new gym. Why? Why? I mean, it's a great gym. But what made you change gyms and go there? Um, you know, there was a, a life life changing event. Um, my my wife uh, had finished school, and we were looking at new places to go. Um, we had a couple different ideas about cities to travel to. Um, on the list was Las Vegas. And she says, Hey, Alex, how was Las Vegas for MMA? And I said that, yeah, we could probably make that one work. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> you know, ma made the move to Vegas. And of course, if you're in Vegas, there's really just the one gym option. It's, it's extreme. And, and that's, that's where you're going to get good work in with everybody. So, yeah. And a lot of life changes, obviously, like you said, uh, we haven't seen you for a little bit. Yeah. I know you dealt with a pretty gnarly injury from yeah. that last fight. Um, can you talk about that experience and, and I guess, Kind of what you went through and, and how you dealt with it yeah you know um i uh i was laid off for a little bit uh six months of of no com no contact after the broken jaw so we really um took a step back to the drawing board and worked a lot of pad work mitt work um but also while i was a, a little bit earlier when i was unable to to really work out at all um I made sure to to get um, what was going on in my head right, and I I saw a, um, a, a performance coach, a mental performance coach, who was able to to go through some techniques about how to not only not only get ready, get ready, get my mind right to get back into things, but tools going forward to to work on the mental side of things as well. So I I think that's been really super important and something that. Um, I, I hadn't really put a lot of time into before and that I feel, um, <laughs> doing a lot of ums, uh, something that, you know, before this, um, this injury, this broken jaw that maybe I wouldn't have done before. So. Alex kind of piggybacking off of that, not talking about the injury, but stepping in there with a guy like Yoel, what did you take away from that? And did you learn anything from that fight about yourself? Yeah. Um, one, no matter how tough you are, you all hits pretty dang hard. 
Um, I, I, if anyone had followed my career before, I, I tell people all the time, I, I had a fight beforehand where I, I took another nasty hit, um, in a flying knee, uh, no breaks, no nothing. Meanwhile, you all does a quick little, a little hook and then broke, broke. So, um, that's the one thing I learned. Got to make sure that we're moving our head. Um, but going forward, uh, the one thing that I learned is it's it's important that me as a fighter to stick to my game plan and and i said that before i i don't like researching my guys i, I don't like knowing too much about my opponent but um i had a guy like you romero who's a legend in the sport and it's it's tough to kind of put on blinders and shut out all that information that's coming in you know he all likes to do this he's he's gonna do that and and so i think that's why it was so important that afterwards i uh worked on some some techniques in the in the mental aspect to to really focus and hone my game uh coming back uh, first let me apologize to someone from chicago that you're not fighting in honolulu but uh, to that point i feel like midwest especially the wisconsin illinois area mma has gone down so much lately um i, I don't think we see as many fighters stay in their areas obviously you're someone who just found a new home in las vegas now, outside of people asking you for tickets, do you feel some sense of pride of coming back to the Midwest, fighting and putting on a showcase in front of a big sports city that seems to lose their homegrown talent? You know, um, yeah, th th to answer your question, first off, I, I, I love coming back. I, you know, I, and this has been a, a match that I've been excited about for a while. My first one back in a bit, in a bit, but uh, always coming back to the Midwest is fun because there's, you know, I, I, I mentioned the Honolulu thing, but really it's a business trip and you know, I'm, I'm not out seeing the sites and taking in that stuff. I'm, I'm hanging out and I'm, I'm putting on a show for the people that are going to come to watch, which I know in the Midwest, there's, there's not a, now, no, it's going to sound like I'm bad, but it's fun to come in and watch a little bit of violence happen. Um, with that being said, as far as people leaving, I, I think it's just, when you reach a, a certain level of sport, you gotta you gotta find larger areas to to keep working, um, and to keep you know that that steel sharp and steel mentality, um, and it just it just goes to show that we got we got good stock here in the Midwest. It's it's maybe maybe a, a breeding ground, and hopefully moving forward that uh, it, it'll become more of of less of a starting place and maybe more of a career place now you talked about extreme couture what have been the biggest things you've been able to take away from your time there really um i i say this all the time and like i i could throw out names and stuff everywhere but really it like i'm saying like i was just saying before about um people moving kind of moving to get that seal sharp and seal there's so many different guys and looks that come through extreme couture um whether they're whether they're living there in Vegas or whether they're just, you know, finishing up fight camp or starting fight camp out there. And um, it's super important that you get different kinds of looks. It's, it's not like, you know, some gym in, in the middle of Kansas where it's like, you know, me and Roy fight three times a week and I, he knows all my moves. I know all his moves. It's I'm always getting different looks. I'm always seeing different stuff. And, Guys are coming in and they have the things that they're good at and you can teach them a little bit and they can teach you a little bit and you can pull and scavenge and keep building towards just becoming a better fighter every day. Last one for me, we're in June. So what's your plan for the rest of this year after this? Plans for the rest of the year. Um, so we got this fight coming up. Uh, pending pending the fight going on, I'm hoping to, to stay busy and get back in it. It's like I said, after, after my last match, it's been a little while. So I'm hoping to, to go ahead and keep clocking in and, and kind of make up this past year. I've, I've been unavailable. <laughs> yeah. Patrick. Uh, hey, Alex, this is Pat McCoy from Combat Sports K. So you found the new home in Extreme Couture. I've got one question for you. What is it like training with Sean Strickland? Yeah, that's that one a lot. Uh, training with Sean is a blast. He's got 
a lot of on the fighting side. He's got a lot of things to to teach and to um, lend. Uh, on the personality side, it's it's fun having somebody who's so who's so passionate about the sport and who's willing to um, share that share that passion a little bit. Sometimes sometimes it could be a little bit much. And I know that there's there have been some times where there's people like, hey, Sean, you got calm down, but you know he's he's got the energy that's uh, it, it, I I find I find it a little bit um, you know a uh, not addictive that's not the word I'm thinking of, but a little bit contagious. You know, Sean gets in there and he's like, let's go, let's bang, I'm ready to ready to do this thing. It's like, yeah, he's right, I am ready to do this thing. So yeah, it, it's it's a blast. Good. Sweet.